I'm going to do the... I'm going to tell you New one does a pretty good job. Make sure. I've never seen a real one. It happens. It happens. Yeah. yeah. Resolution. I need the resolution. Mr. Chairperson, we're we're all set whenever you're ready. All right then. And just uh, before we dive into things, so just a reminder, we are. Doing this through YouTube, and so always be sure to make sure the mic is in front of you when we're speaking, <coughs> staff included. That way, we make sure everybody's listening to us and can hear us. Not Commissioners, listening. everybody ready? Commissioners? Yes. All right. In that case, uh, I would like to uh, call the meeting to order. This is the uh, regular meeting of the City of Branson Planning Commission, October 7th, 2021. Uh, we welcome all of those folks, uh, citizens and uh, participants tonight that have come to attend. Uh, if you uh, uh, wish to speak to us tonight, we request that you step to the podium, uh, state your name, and uh, sign our registry. We have a name and address registry that we ask you to sign uh, in order to keep track of things because these proceedings are being recorded. Uh, and with that, uh, we will uh, be making uh, commissioners. I'd like you to, to pay attention for just a moment, please. Uh, as chair, we're going to make a slight change in the way we handle items tonight to be in consistent compliance with Robert's Rules of Order and with the Board of Aldermen for the City of Branson. Uh, we're going to uh, announce an item. The chair will announce an item, announce a resolution or what have you. And before we begin any action on that item, uh, we're going to uh, obtain a motion in the affirmative and a second. That allows that motion to be placed on the table. Our applicants have paid money to uh, go through the process, and uh, they are due the chance to be fully heard. So we'll take that motion, and from that point on, then we'll deal with it uh, concrete sequentially. Uh, we will ask uh, for a director's report. At that point, we will not stop for questions because we'll immediately then ask for an applicant's report. And at the end of those two reports, that's when this commission will have a chance to begin to ask questions. Uh, Subsequent to that, then we'll invite the public who has come to uh, speak either in favor or in opposition of that item to come and speak to us, and then the commission will again have a chance to ask questions uh, uh, upon those individuals if they bring uh, issues before us. Then subsequent to that, we would uh, entertain any amendments to the original um, uh, item, deal with those amendments, and then finally the vote. So a uh, bit of a change, so I wanted to give you a heads up for that and help us get through all that. Thank you. In that case, uh, we'll uh, have a roll call, please. Thank you, Chairperson. I'll take the roll. Commissioner Romine? Here. Vice Chairperson O'Day? Here. Commissioner Richards? Here. Commissioner Howden? Here. Commissioner Lloyd? Here. Commissioner LeBlanc? Here. Chairperson Davis? Here. Commissioner Nichols? Here. Alderman Denham? Here. Thank you. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. Uh, the first item of business tonight uh, is uh, to invite the uh, public for comment. Uh, and this is an opportunity for anyone in the audience who is here tonight to speak to this body uh, regarding some issue that is not on the agenda, something that you have a question about, your property or, or a question of, the, of this commission, uh, that will not be covered in our regular agenda. You'll have a chance to speak under those items and so now is the time for uh, anyone who would like to uh, do that. We will limit the amount of time uh, given to each speaker. And if there are multiple speakers here who wish to address us, we would appreciate it if uh, one individual would be appointed to come and uh, give us the information that you uh, are uh, seeking to give us and do so in a timely manner. So we would invite anyone to the podium at this time who would like to speak to us about an item not on the agenda tonight. <clears throat>
Good evening. My name is Cherry Webster. I live at 118 Country Bluff Drive. And I'm here tonight to check on the status of the request that Chairman Davis made last month. There were four of you that weren't here last month. Commissioner Richards, Nichols, Romine, and O'Day. And as a review, the request was related to um, questions regarding the zoning of 3855 Fall Creek Road, Fountains on Fall Creek, August 11th, 2020. That zoning took place by the staff, not by the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission was circumvented at that time. And as a quick review, I especially wanted, I don't know what your process is when you miss a meeting. I don't know if you go back and get copies of the handouts that were provided. But uh, Commissioner Nichols, I had made a statement in the July meeting about that zoning and whether or not it was lawful. But I didn't have the backup information. But all of that was presented last month. You can also watch the video. However, the first 20 minutes was conveniently cut off, wasn't working. So we had to take a break. But there is other audio. So the questions that we asked last month were related to the city attorney's comments on August 11th at the zoning at the Board of Aldermen meeting. And he referenced precedent in Christian and Green counties uh, uh, with, as they are annexed into the cities of Ozark and Republic. And he also cited case law, I believe um, Baldwin, but he didn't come up with any specific examples. So in a sunshine request law, uh, I've made a records request to get answers to those questions. I also, um, as, you, as that property was zoned by way of an annexation plan of intent, two months after it had already been annexed on May the 12th, 2020, and came in as agriculture, like I said, it, it circumvented the commission and the staff designated the, the zoning. So in order to do that, then the question comes up, well, well what happens with uh, city ordinance 94-7? In fact, let me just go back to just the annexation section of uh, the city code. It's all of one sentence. Any territory hereafter annexed to the city shall be zoned agriculture until changed as provided in this chapter, meaning 94-7, unless indicated in the plan of intent. Well, is that an involuntary uh, annexation or voluntary annexation? Because that property was annexed in May as a voluntary annexation. But then in July, 94-7 was not followed. It was violated. And there are three options for zoning a property. The first one, there has to be a recommendation by the Planning Commission, notice of a public hearing. The second one, the board can, can vote. But first, there has to, be, uh, has to be submitted to the Planning Commission, and a hearing is granted. The third one is accompanied by um, information from the Planning Commission. So one of the questions we asked last month was, what's the justification for violating 94-7? In addition to that, if you do an, a zoning, if you allow the staff to do the zoning rather than the planning commission, you're then violating state statute 89.070, which uh, attorney LeBeck read at the beginning of the training session, but he didn't actually read the ordinance. And the ordinance um, enables this commission to make the, hold the hearings and make the recommendations. It says, such commission shall make a preliminary report and hold public hearings thereon, thereon before submitting its final report. And such legislative body, being the Board of Aldermen, shall not hold its public hearings or take action until it has received the final report of such commission. So one of the questions to Attorney LeBec and this, this body was, what's the justification for that? Why, why was that violated? And then uh, thirdly, there's case law, Missouri versus the city of Arnold. And in, um, in this case, a city must follow the requirements and procedures of its own local zoning regulations. Otherwise, its amendments and other zoning decision, decisions are invalid and unenforceable. And in the case of Arnold, the defendants failed to submit the proposed zoning amendments to the city planning commission for recommendation and report as required by ordinance and statute. The Missouri Court of Appeals held that the violation of the procedures required in the zoning ordinance and statute rendered the zoning changes void. 
So one of the other questions that we asked last month was would the planning commissioners um, ask, the, um, ask the board to rescind and void the zoning from last year? And we further asked the PNC to ask the board to place a zoning item on the planning commission agenda. So um, Commissioner Davis explained that, okay, bulk of that wasn't within their purview. But if you go back and watch the video, started about the 32 minute mark, you'll see where uh, Ruth Denham, Commissioner Denham asked if she should take the information to the Board of Aldermen. Uh, Chairman Davis stated that she should report to the Board of Aldermen the proceedings that occurred and bring the reports back from what occurred at the Board of Aldermen. Uh, Davis assigned her to make that report uh, at the next BOA meeting, which was September 14th, and she did that. Davis then assigned Denham to make a report from, um, um, he then said, uh, I want to see the administrator's report on it, of course our planning director's report on it, and legal, all four areas. So um, last Thursday when this, the agenda for this meeting came out, uh, there was no item for the answers to that question nor were there any answers to it at the subsequent Board of Aldermen meeting on September 28th. So I'm here tonight to ask what is the status, but, also, but last Friday I first sent a letter to the city administrator, Stan Dobbins, asking him what the status was of the four reports, and I got rather interesting response. Um, he said to me, I have no authority over this matter. It is a legal issue and our outside counsel advised the information is protected communication. The chairman of the PNZ commission sent communication to the board that the information requested is not something the PNZ board wants or desires. And yet you made a request for four, four reports. He then notes, he stated this in the noted email copied below, but the email that he copied below was from seven days before I made the request. It's an email to you uh, Commissioner uh, Denham on September 24th copied to the Alderman Dobbins, Manning, and LeBec and says, thank you, Ruth. Please clarify to the mayor and Alderman that the questions are from Ms. Webster to the city and are not questions from the PNC Commission. Mr. Dobbins goes on to say, it appears you are attempting to circumvent the Missouri Sunshine Law and I'm not permitted to be involved in that matter. Please direct any legal questions to our city attorney. Well, I'm not trying to circumvent the, the uh, Sunshine Law, but I made two records requests for answers to those questions, the justifications from the city attorney, and all he could come up with was um, state statute 610.020 and 610.010, which states closed record information. What is so closed record about citing the precedent that he was referring to broadly in Christian County, Green County, City of Ozark and Republic, the case law in, um, in Baldwin. And Baldwin can be tricky because Baldwin is in the county of St. Louis. And if the, the, the case law he was, was uh, referring to was an involuntary annexation, they don't follow regular rules. They have special rules for annexation um, in, that, in that city. I additionally got a response from Attorney Lebec, who stated, as I have stated previously, and again, as plainly as I know how, I cannot give you legal advice and you need to seek the advice of an attorney. By city code, I provide advice and counsel to the mayor, the board of aldermen, and the city administrator only. I didn't ask him for legal advice. I asked him for the status of the reports. When you answer a question that wasn't asked, that's called stonewalling. So, at this time, uh, we would like to know what is the status of the four reports. Chairman Davis, I'd like a, a clarification from you. Um, did you uh, inform Mr. Dobbins that the information requested is not something that the PM board wants or desires? Or do you want the four reports from the alderman, the planning, the, le the legal, and... Um, and the um, administrator. Thank you for your report tonight, Ms. Webster. You can have a seat now. Well, I'm here to answer questions. If you have questions. Does any commissioner have a question? This is not the time for commissioner questions. Thank you for your report. 
Uh, let me respond to you again by saying that uh, we are expecting a report from uh, our older woman, Denim, tonight. Maybe you've made that report for her already. I'm not sure. You've presented information that we haven't heard before. Uh, do you know the status of the other three reports? I do not. And okay. I have not personally asked for them. Uh, that's what the role of our alderman, alderman okay. representative is. Okay. So you may take a seat. Thank you very much. And your concerns fall in the area of violations of codes to which, folks, we are not capable of making a legal opinion, and you're putting us in a position to do so. So we have referred these questions to the Board of Aldermen, which is, which is uh, uh, the appropriate body to deal with those questions. And so, uh, you know. I, I thought you were fact finders. Isn't that, isn't that what Attorney yeah. Lebec just said? Do you, why would you not want to know why, the, why these rules, these statute and case law and ordinance were we have, violated? We have, we have inquired of our legal counsel, have the codes of the city of Branson regarding the planning and zoning methods and actions taken for the subject property that you're talking about, have they been followed appropriately and executed correctly? And the answer that we have received, the counsel that we have received is yes. And that's where we stand. Thank you. Interesting. Does anyone else wish to address the board tonight? If you're going to speak about the same topic, we will ask you to only take five minutes. Anyone else here? Uh, everyone else on a different topic? Okay, in that case, we're going to move on to the approval of the minutes for September 7th study session and the regular meeting. Uh, Chair would entertain a motion for uh, the September 7th planning and uh, study session minutes. So moved. I have a motion by Commissioner Howden. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. <laughs> Get a roll call vote, please. Thank you, Chairperson. Excuse me, Mr. Chairperson. Yes. Okay. Um, I just wanted to respond because I was given marching orders. I guess uh, that's we'll it. do that in reports later t later in the oh, meeting. Okay. This is You'll, for the. Okay. Now this this is public comment. We take comment here. Your report will come at the end of the meeting, where we typically do uh, reports uh, for commissioners. I'm sorry, I thought it was for amending the minutes. Oh, you have an amendment to the uh, minutes? I don't know if, the, if it should be amended or not, but I was asked to bring back a report and that's not stated no. in the minutes. Okay, thank you. The minutes as printed, we have a motion and a second. Let's vote. Thank you, Chairperson. Commissioner Romine? Yes. Vice Chairperson O'Day? Yes. Commissioner Richards? Yes. Commissioner Howden? Yes. Commissioner Lloyd? Yes. Commissioner LeBlanc? Yes. Chairperson Davis? Yes. Commissioner Nichols? Yes. Alderwoman Denham? Yes. Thank you. Motion is carried. Now we will accept a motion regarding the planning and zoning regular minutes from September 7th, 2021. Chair would entertain a motion for approval of those minutes. Mr. Chairman, I'll make that motion. Commissioner Lloyd moves to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Commissioner LeBlanc. Any adjustments to those minutes? In that case, let's vote. Thank you, Chairperson. Commissioner Romine? Yes. Vice Chairperson O'Day? Yes. Commissioner Richards? Yes. Commissioner Howden? Yes. Commissioner Lloyd? Yes. Commissioner LeBlanc? Yes. Chairperson Davis? Yes. Commissioner Nichols? Yes. Alderwoman Denham? No. <coughs> Motion is carried. Thank you. And that brings us then to the first of our public hearings for this evening. And uh, this is uh, going to fall under uh, resolution number VA 21-2. This public hearing is in response to a request to vacate a portion of Birch Street and a portion of Seminole Street 
within the Caudell Heights subdivision in Branson, Missouri. In order to get this motion on the table so that we can appropriately discuss it and act upon it, Chair would entertain a motion in the affirmative for this resolution. So moved. We have a motion. And second. A second. Who's the second? Commissioner Richards. Ah, thank you. We have a motion and a second. And at this point then, we're going to begin the discussion. And as uh, we'll want to do consistently, we'll start this discussion uh, with a report uh, from uh, Director Hornicle. And uh, then subsequent to that, uh, if there are uh, uh, an applicant here to speak, then we would have the applicant speak. So Joel, we're going to take over, please. Thank you, Chairperson Davis. So as mentioned in the <coughs> title of this item, it is a street vacation for a portion of Birch Street and a portion of Seminole Street. Um, our applicant this evening is Ms. McAllister from Miko Engineering uh, on behalf of First Baptist Church of Branson, which initiated this request. Uh, we do have a, just an image on the screen this evening of one of the areas we'll be talking about, which happens to be a parking lot, as you can clearly see, not a street right-of-way. Next is our vicinity maps, going through some different looks of, of the request. Again, the, the areas included in the request are outlined in purple. Um, we do have the two right-of-ways shown here, and as I mentioned, the one is well within uh, the First Baptist Church of Branson's parking area there, the northern one. And then the southern one is kind of on the southern edge of their parking lot, um, and also, also along three properties there you see along Lee Avenue in the Hiawatha Heights neighborhood. You'll notice the First Baptist Church of Branson uh, is to the east of those parking lots. Next is a vicinity map showing the zoning. Clearly, we can see that it's all low-density residential, both um, the properties around the subject properties as well as um, everything within the view. Next is the existing land use. Uh, very similar to the zoning, we have uh, many, many single-family homes in this area. However, we do have um, the properties that identified for religious assembly, that being the First Baptist Church, as well as um, their parking areas there to the east and to the north. Next, we have some orthometric views, in case we need to reference them for any reason from all four directions. Now getting into the details of the request. So per Missouri revised state statutes, um, when somebody requests a vacation of a street or right-of-way, um, it's to be divided equally between all adjacent property owners. So in this case, as pointed out in our vicinity maps, while the First Baptist Church of Branson does own the majority of the adjacent properties, we do have three homeowners uh, on the far southern edge, um, that being Ms. Snowden, uh, Mr. McCulley, and Ms. Baker. Uh, they do have property, and so they are very much a party to this request. As a result, uh, all four of these property owners have submitted um, owner acknowledgement forms to the city, signatures showing they are a party to it and they are agreement. Um, that way, when and if this item is approved uh, by the Board of Aldermen, um, then it would be split equally between all of these parties. Next is the goal of the request is mainly to expand the current parking area for the First Baptist Church of Branson. They very much want to have a continuous area for parking so they can have it be as efficient as possible and make sure the access in and out of that parking area is as efficient as possible. And obviously, uh, it, it's of great interest. The city, it, we're required to maintain these right away. That's our responsibility. <clears throat> Um, so right now we're talking about an area that is used quite often by the church for parking, and it's really a question on whether the city uh, wants to maintain that area. As a result, staff, uh, typically as we do, um, will review applicable parking regulations with the First Baptist Church of Branson if they do decide to um, do some redesign or redevelopment of their parking areas just to make sure that they're well within uh, the parking code maximum that's allotted for a religious assembly, which happens to be one space per 75 square foot of assembly space within the church. One of our other major requirements when we have street vacation requests come through is that all utility providers within the city um, acknowledge the request and verify if they have any issue or concern. So the letters we, we did receive back were from Liberty Utilities noting no issue or concern for either of the portions. Sudden link, no issue or concern with either portion. And then hearing from the city of Branson, as they have both a sewer and water main that runs through the Birch Street right-of-way, uh, eight-inch line to be exact, 
They have requested to the applicant uh, to have a 15 foot wide utility easement provided to the city uh, prior to the first read, or I'm sorry, the final reading of this matter to the Board of Aldermen just to ensure the city has the space to repair that line, either line in the future if needed. As a result of this information, staff rec recommends approval of the request and I'm not certain if we have the applicant with us this evening or not. Is Ms. McAllister here or her representative or a representative from the First Baptist Church? Is there anyone here, the property owners of the individuals who are property owners that are affected by this street vacation? We obviously talk through all, with all of them throughout the process. And, and the letters. And we have the letters and we we're very comfortable with the request and um, you know, given that it is the city property that's asked to be vacated, um, again, we're very comfortable providing this request to you all tonight. Then at this time, I would open the floor for commissioners to ask questions of staff. Does anyone have a question regarding this clear. item? Pretty clear. All right, in that case, uh, anyone have an amendment uh, to this item? Hearing no one wanting to make an amendment, We'll assume that we are all in the frame of mind and ready to vote in favor of we, or in opposition. To we will want the public. We want oh, to make I'm sure. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, was there anyone in the public here that wanted to comment about this vacation? This is a street vacation. The city's given up its land. Okay, I don't hear anyone wanting to speak. No other comments from the commission? No amendments? In that case, I think we are now ready to vote. Do we have movers? movers. We're, we did that at the beginning. Um, My apologies. Yep. Yep. And I believe it was, um, I know Richards provided the second. It was, I was the, uh, Nichols, made yep. the Commissioner motion. Nichols Richards. made the motion and Commissioner yep. Richards was the second. Yep. Give me another open vote. Thank you. Commissioner Romine? Yes. Vice Chairperson O'Day? Yes. Commissioner Richards? Yes. Commissioner Howden? Yes. Commissioner Lloyd? Yes. Commissioner LeBlanc? Yes. Chairperson Davis? Yes. Commissioner Nichols? Yes. Alderman Denham? Yes. Vote is not closed. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Commission. Uh, the next item on our agenda tonight is a resolution. Uh, regarding a plan development. This is resolution number PD 21-2. This is a request for a plan development amendment to plan development PD 2005-007. This is known as the Branson Hills plan development. This is pertaining to the removal and rezoning of the property located at 1601 Branson Hills Parkway to community commercial from plan development to community commercial. In order to properly speak about this uh, issue tonight, Chair would entertain a motion in the affirmative to get this motion on the table. I need a motion and a second, please. So moved. Second. I have a motion, Romine, second, O'Day. And at this point now, we will begin discussion through the director's report and recommendation. Joel, if you would take this over, please. Yes, thank you, Chairperson. Um, so again, this is a plan development amendment to remove a property specifically known as 1601 Branson Hills Parkway from the Branson Hills plan development and then rezone it to community commercial. Um, the applicant is Mr. King Coltrane of CJW Transportation Consultants LLC on behalf of the property owner, current property owner, um, BH Land LLC. And we have an image here uh, showing the current curb cut driveway apron, if you will, into the property off of Branson Hills Parkway. Getting into a little bit more detail about the property itself, again, in our vicinity aerial shown outlined in purple, um, it rests along Branson Hills Parkway to the south of it, um, in between the Summit Ridge subdivision there, which is to the west of the subject property, and the Branson Recplex, which sits to the east of the subject property. Looking at the zoning of the property, as we've already mentioned, part of the Branson Hills plan development, um, the majority, or I, I should say the rest of the blue or the cyan you see in the screen is also part of that same plan development. <coughs> and then you'll notice the recplex is zoned conservation there to the east. 
And then you do notice a few properties zoned low density residential uh, to the south of the subject property. Then looking at the existing land use, uh, Summit Ridge is single family homes, actually medium density residential homes, I apologize. Um, but then to the north of Branson Hills Parkway, we have single family homes um, and, and some additional medium density residential there along Mulligan Court, which also is just north of Branson Hills Parkway. And then the Recplex again as recreational space. And the darker green you see is the uh, part of the golf course open space as well. The proposed zoning, the red being the community commercial that we mentioned in the title of the item. Again, we have the orthometric views from all four directions if need be. And then again, getting into the details of the actual request. Just some background first on the Branson Hills PD. Um, it is known by, by staff as PD 2005-007, so the seventh plan development of that year in 2005. It was approved at the end of the year in December of 2005. Uh, the current use of the subject property is identified in that plan development as allowing multifamily and commercial development. Um, currently, it is undeveloped, as you saw from our images and our vicinity maps. However, it has been cleared um, in some minimal, just kind of general earthwork to try and flatten out the property and uh, prepared it for development, but uh, it's very much undeveloped, never been developed up to this point. The applicant's request came to us uh, to specifically remove this property from the Branson Hills Plan Development so they could have greater development flexibility moving forward. Um, there was significant preference on the applicant's part to be regulated under the city's current zoning code versus the plan development. Um, the, the city worked quite extensively to update our zoning codes and regulations to be more flexible um, so that plan developments were not a necessity in the future uh, as they had been in the past. This area is identified in the community plan 2030 as mixed use, um, so it very much allows for both residential and commercial development, um, just as it was identified in the plan development. However, just to take note again of the applicant's request for community commercial, uh, their goal at this point is to develop a health clinic within the property. As a result, staff recommends approval, and I do believe Mr. Coltrane is here with us this evening to add to our presentation. Thank you, Joe. Welcome, Mr. Coltrane. Please come forward. And again, if you would uh, sign your name uh, and uh, address to our registry, please. And we welcome you to the podium. And you can tell us about uh, your uh, request for this rezoning. Oh, good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Um, we come to you tonight because planning and zoning, uh, we're representing both the current owner of the property and the future purchaser of the property. Um, the current PD was written very specifically for the uses that they had. The, what our health clinic would do fits very easily within your just standard zoning, so that's the re request is so that we don't have to rewrite a whole PD for that piece of property when we have a use that fits perfectly inside of one of your standard zonings. Um, our end use um, will look extremely a lot like your rec center. Oddly enough, the exterior finishes of our clinic are very similar to the exterior finishes of the rec center. And we believe a health clinic and a rec center are both related to the same thing. So we think we're very good neighbor use. We're a quiet use, so we don't affect um, any residential that's in the area. Uh, our clinics are somewhere between 20 and 30,000 square feet. So they're a pretty nice facility. Um, again, you know, we're already in Branson, the end users in Branson already and, and uh, operating a hospital. So we think we're a pretty good uh, contributor and neighbor for the uh, city of Branson. Um, the process so far, your staff has been excellent, great to work with. So 
that's not what we see in every city that you go to. So you can be happy that they're uh, doing their job well and promoting uh, the city of Branson. Um, I would be more than happy to answer any questions you might have um, of this development. Thank you, Mr. Goldrin. Yeah, uh, welcome. Uh, we're excited. I'm sure I speak for the commission. We're excited to see development occur on that piece of property. And uh, I'm sure there are a few questions on the commissioner's part. So I'll open the floor to uh, uh, commissioners to address your questions and those to staff if they have any. So if you'd just stay at the podium for the moment, please. So commission, it's time now to ask questions of uh, staff or of the applicant. <coughs> Yes, Mr. Coulteran. Coulteran, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, in the staff report, it states that the zoning is not required, um, that that's an allowed use on that parcel in the plan development. So is there a specific purpose for this request if it's already an allowed use? I'm sorry. I couldn't hear all of that. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, the staff report states that your health clinic is an allowed use currently in that plan development zone. Is there a specific request as to why you're requesting a rezoning if that's already an allowed use? Uh, the, the, and I can show you pictures of the clinics. The clinics have signage on the buildings and the PD signage was um, different than what would allow for our clinic to function. So our, our clinic works in that zoning the signage allowed in that zoning matches with our clinic. So that's that's the re main reason for it, is to not have to rewrite a PD because we'd have to change and modify the PD and to uh, just allow for the, the zoning that's standard on our clinics. Okay. Or I mean the signage that's standard on our clinics. Okay, so this is just for an amendment for signage? No, they, they are asking for the property be removed from the plan development. So it's regulated by city code. Okay. Instead but of the, having the only a, holdback is just the signage. It's not the actual. No, it's not just the signage. It's not having to. The PD was written specifically for the golf course residential development. It wasn't written to allow a health clinic per se. So it. it it allows it, but it would have to have some verbiage change and rewriting it. So it just seemed a lot easier to take your standard zoning and utilize that standard zoning for the property. I, I can I can expand on that a little bit. So early on when we talked with the applicant, um, we, we made an interpretation as we regularly do because not everything is perfectly written in code exactly to every real world situation. So. We are required to, from time to time, do some interpretation. So the plan development does allow hospitals, and it does allow offices. So we felt like a hospital was a more intense medical use than a clinic would be. Um, so as a result, we did share with them our comfort level that it would be an allowed use in the plan development, whereas the city zoning code does specifically call out medical and health clinics. Um, and again, it was just working as we always do with every applicant. Um, how they want to proceed because at the end of the day, it's their request um, and they very much felt more comfortable aligning themselves with the city zoning code uh, than the plan development. We just, we wanted to make note in the staff report, as you pointed out, that um, we could have eventually gotten there with a plan development amendment. It was just the applicant was more favorable to removal from the plan development. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hornicle. And if, can you go back to the zoning map for this, please? Because it's kind of, and I'll just, just in summary, the everything that's um, in blue, that's in the plan development. And each parcel sometimes has their own zoning requirements. And so since we didn't get a copy of the actual plan development so we could see what... It was, was, in, a, the, it was in the packet. We the, the entire plan development? Yep. Oh, yep. okay, I'm sorry, I missed it. Can you state what uses are allowed in between the, the low-density residential and... The subject property? So this entire area, it's all that multifamily and commercial. Um, that, that is currently what the plan development allows for that area. So the subject subject property allows commercial yeah, the, currently? Yeah, the, the, the lines of the plan development don't exactly align with the lines of the properties as they exist today. 
Um, so there's a little bit of interpretation there, but um, it, it, is, it does very much allow for commercial uses and, and multifamily uses. And you'll actually see with our next item, um, it kind of reiterates what they're doing. We're, we're um, doing a very similar thing the city is with the next item. So it, it hopefully provides even more context and reason for this request. So this, this rezoning is actually taking it from a mixed use to a commercial use, so it's expanding. Um, so the mixed use within the plan develop, or the mixed use is out of the community plan 2030. That's a preferred land use for the property, and that very much aligns with how the plan development um, suggests for this property to be developed with a mix of both the multifamily and the commercial uses. So that, that very much is mixed use under the city zoning code. Okay, so there is currently commercial allowed on the subject property. Yes, the plan development that's in place today does allow commercial development on that parcel, correct. Okay, thanks. Other questions? Uh, Commissioner Howden. Joel, is your recommendation ultimately to the applicant um, fall within the desire to sort of ultimately do away with plan developments in our community? We, we have been trying to do that for a long time, um, especially the ones that never came to fruition because um, if anything, they're hampering development potential. Um, and so anytime somebody approaches us with an idea to lessen the amount of planned developments we have in the community, we are definitely engaged and, and want to work with them and figure out what the best solution for everybody is. This is, in my opinion, this is uh, obviously an appropriate uh, change of zoning. It's something the applicant wants. It best describes the ultimate use of the land. Uh, it's being uh, done and proposed by a uh, highly uh, appreciated uh, entity within our community. Uh, and uh, it uh, allows us to uh, simplify uh, for the applicant, as he has stated, and for us as well, uh, the sometimes confusing codes that plan developments uh, have uh, have out there all over town. Uh, I wonder if you, I'm sure you are aware uh, that as you move from the plan development into our uh, standard uh, zoning and then development codes that there will be some differences uh, from the plan development in what we expect from uh, landscape, uh, green space, uh, although there's no green space on the land now, uh, those sorts of things, and I'm, uh, are you, you are aware of that and, and are, are prepared to do a wonderful job with landscape and make that a, as equally attractive of a piece of property as our, as our awesome yes, uh, yes, rectplex sir. next door? Yes. And that's and very and important and that's to us. that's part of the nice thing of this is it makes it very easy to follow your zoning regulation. And, of course, as we move forward with building plans, we'd follow the city's code for building plans also. Very well. Uh, at this point in time, uh, you might want to stay where you are uh, in the event there's someone in the audience here that may have a, a question for you. Any other questions? On, oh, yes, uh, Commissioner LeBlanc. So in reference to, you made a kind of big point about the signage on the building. What specifically about the signage is the reason why you want to remove it from the PD and then just... Um, well, that's just one tiny portion of it. We've kind of focused on that, but... Uh, the difference is that we have a, a sign on the building and a pe uh, uh, column sign as well. Are, are they like real lit up signs that are going to be really bright or anything like that? Just because adjacent to that property is a you know a higher end development, and then yet 55 and older just to the to the west of you. And I was want to make sure I can makes sense wise. <laughs> Show you a picture of the signing if that helps. Yeah. Those, those are the sorts of things that uh, will be attended to in the development codes as the right. process moves along. So we right. don't need to be getting into the weeds here okay. tonight. Yeah, Thank I, just, you. I was just curious because yeah. you made a big yeah. point. Good about point. Signing. Yeah, no, they won't be obtrusive to the neighboring okay. properties. Perfect. They're not flashing changeable movie signs or anything right. like that. Commissioner LeBlanc, if I may, um, also just add that we do have brightness regulations in our sign code okay. um, to make sure that that falls in line and isn't a negative effect on surrounding properties. Okay. Uh, I would invite anyone in the audience tonight who uh, would like to speak either in favor of or in opposition to this uh, issue and to also uh, ask questions. And please, again, if you would uh, put your name and address on our registry and, and we welcome you to the podium.
Good evening, I'm Marcia Skimper Carlock. Um, I live in Branson Hills, and I'm curious as to that spot that you would like, which I envy. Um, of that, are you guys going to be paying the SID on it? Or are you going to be exempt from that? Because I've heard that comments tonight were removing it from the PD. Does that mean they don't pay SID? So the plan development is only for the zoning regulations and how a property can be used and built. The SID is completely different than, than the plan development. So in other words, they're not paying the SID. Is that what you're saying? No, that's not what I said. I said that the plan development handles different matters than the SID does. So by removing the property from the plan development does not affect in any way their responsibility to take care of the SID payments. Okay. All right. Um, and then the other question that I have is, are you going to use that entire property or are you going to use it part of it for other things or other development? <coughs> we'll do the layout for the property and see. It's likely that we won't need the entire property, but until we lay out the site and see, I don't know for sure how much of it will be taken here. Thank you. Good job answering those questions. Excuse me. My name is Mike Evans, and uh, I'm new to the game down here in Branson. We just moved down and bought a place in um, Summit Ridge, my wife and I, and uh, got this in the mail and came down and seen, uh, put our DVs on for a minute, uh, Jacob Phillips uh, when I first got this to find out exactly what was going on. Um, and I guess what's going to be talked about next is probably more in line with what he told me. Uh, this subject matter never came up. Uh, and it's really not even close to the same subject matter. Uh, I'm, the one thing that she talked about that does bother me, uh, since she brought it up, was the fact that we're, we're looking to approve one thing, but it could lead to approving more things in the future. Um, I don't know a whole lot about the area other than when I bought into Summit Ridge, uh, I had my place inspected. And upon that inspection, um, my inspector told me that uh, my water pressure was low. In fact, it barely met the state levels. Um, so. My biggest concern when I got this was, um, and then I, of course, had to do a bunch of investigative work, which I found out the reason that we don't have water pressure in Summit Ridge is because it was signed off on. Um, and like I said, I'm not from here. I'm not pointing fingers. I wasn't here when it was under construction. But the reason our water pressure is so low is because we're at the top of the hill, Summit Ridge. And um, the way I understand it, the person across the street from us, the big mansion up there, has no water pressure because he's even higher elevated than we are. And so there's nothing pushing the water up there because in my investigation, the water tower isn't high enough to get us pressure. So one of the things that would have had it happen would be to raise the elevation of the water tower to get us pressure. Um, where we can at least take a little bit of a beating in the shower, but um, we don't get to do that. If there's more development in that area, our, our water pressure is already low, and this was going to be a concern of mine, one of my concerns. I'm just new to the game here. I'm not, I don't know all about Branson, what I've seen so far. I will say I love it, and I want to thank you all for your time. 
Okay, he, he, this, I know this is a, can be a challenging job. But if there is gonna be development there, and they're gonna be using the water from that area also, where does that put us? You know, I mean, I think that presents a challenge, not so much for this gentleman, he's putting in a building. He doesn't provide us that water. You know, the Branson Utilities provide us that water. And now they'll be using water, and well, they're just down the hill from us. I'd like to see somewhere along the line is where we're gonna get a boost, where we're gonna put a pump in that's gonna get water up to us. And I, I understood that, and I won't even bring it up because it's probably the next, next subject we're gonna talk about. But development wasn't even anything I heard about in this. I just heard about a conservation area. And uh, so kind of got omitted. <laughs> But I, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. I just know that if they're going to be, you know, using up the water pressure in that, and I'm sure the hospital or clinic or whatever it is it's going to end up being, uh, is going to have to have certain standard of water pressure. I'm not sure we even have enough water pressure if one of our homes caught on fire. The, the hydrants are there, but I'm not sure there's enough pressure to put out that fire. Well, thank you for hearing me tonight. Thank you, Mike. Uh, yes, regarding the, the water pressure thing, I think staff has heard that. It might not be a new issue for you. Well, and one thing we just want to point out is that is public water district number three. Um, so it's not a city water. However, we still, when any development does go on, up within the city limits, our fire marshal and fire inspectors do look at those things in plan review um, and do make sure there is sufficient water pressure um, to meet the minimum standards, and that, that's just what they are. Just like building codes, they're minimum standards. Um, and so if, if and when this property we're talking about this evening does develop, that will definitely be part of the development review, building permit review, and, and all of that. In, in your issue, the, the city has limited ability to do anything to Water District 3, uh, which is a completely different uh, political subdivision uh, and providing you the water. Uh, but we do have building requirements, and through that process is what Director Harnicle is saying. We'll ensure that the clinic has adequate water pressure and uh, that uh, where it's possible, I'm sure that the engineers in the water service area for the city will continue to, uh, I hope, communicate your concerns and, and see if uh, there's some process by which they can. You're in Branson, but you're not in Br on Branson water. It's kind of confusing. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Uh, it, do you have anything to say in regard to the water uh, question that came up here? Yes, we'll, we'll have in our design, we have to check the water pressure and we have to make sure that there is adequate fire flow protection for our building or we wouldn't be able to build on that land to begin with. So as far as the land goes and everything, we'll be uh, verifying that there's fire flow and, and water available there. I'm not sure what their particular issue is that's, that's causing the, the problem. So. If we run across something in our um, engineering and, and uh, design that points to a problem for the neighbors, we more than uh, um, we would definitely notify the water district and see about a solution. But um, before we could build anything on there, we have to verify and, and provide fire flow protection. Thank you. Does anyone else uh, in the audience tonight wish to? Uh comment uh, in favor, in opposition, or just ask a question. You'll need to come back up here. I'm sorry. Well, for that question, you can contact we, we'll, this gentleman over here. We'll be, we'll be happy to talk with you. Um, if you hold off um, this evening, we'll make sure we get your information. <laughs> and we'll, or we'll be happy to reach out to you tomorrow as well. I mean, whatever's convenient for you, we'll be happy to, We've got to get you that address. In that regard, then, uh, at this point, uh, does the commission have any additional follow-up questions or an amendment for this uh, item? Uh, hearing no amendments.
The chair would now uh, call the question. And let's do a roll call vote, please. Thank you, Chairperson. Now open vote. Commissioner Romine? Yes. Vice Chairperson O'Day? Yes. Commissioner Richards? Yes. Commissioner Howden? Yes. Commissioner Lloyd? I'm going to abstain due to a possible conflict. Thank you. Commissioner LeBlanc? Well, yes. Chairperson Davis? Yes. Commissioner Nichols? Yes. Alderwoman Denham? Yes. Vote is now closed. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Moving forward, uh, we're going to deal with uh, on the next item on our agenda tonight, which is uh, also uh, an amendment. Actually, it's an amendment to a plan development. This is resolution number PD 21 3. This is a request for a plan development amendment to PD plan development 2005 007, known as the Branson Hills plan development, pertaining to the removal and rezoning of the properties located at 1851 Branson Hills Parkway to conservation zoning. And at this time, we'll ask uh, Director Hornicle to uh, describe and, and give a uh, Explain this. Uh, thank you. Almost didn't follow my own rules here. Thank goodness I have good people around. We need a motion on the table for this one. Can I impose upon a couple of commissioners to get a motion in a second here? So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> I, got, I got a motion in a second. Howden, motion. Romine, second. Okay. Thank you. Now, commissioner. Uh, Director Hornicle, if you would tell us about this and what, what, what your recommendation is regarding this item. Yeah, absolutely. Um, maybe some hindsight here from us. We may have wanted to do this one before. It may have helped with the previous one. But um, just one thing I want to point out uh, to those of you in the audience hearing the, the comments that were made during the last item. So, so this is a much larger piece of property uh, than the one in the previous item. And per Missouri state statutes, we're obligated to notify property owners within 185 feet of the subject properties. Um, so again, so once we get to the vicinity maps, you'll see why so many more people were notified with this property than the last one. So whereas you may have gotten notification about this item, you may have not received notification for the previous item because it was a smaller property, and thus um, not as many people were notified for that one. So just wanted to make sure it was clear in the record um, about the notification process for both of these items and um, hopefully answer any questions anyone had. Um, with that, this request is actually from the city. Um, staff is bringing this item to you all this evening as we are the owners of it. Um, we are doing exactly what the previous applicant is doing, which is removing uh, the piece of property from the Branson Hills plan development. Um, however, our request is to zone our piece conservation. Going through our vicinity maps, as you can see outlined in purple, uh, um, again, a much larger piece. Uh, it almost takes up the entire area, um, or at least a, a very significant portion of the properties uh, to the west of Branson Hills Parkway. It's not a, not a regular piece of property by any means either. You'll notice lots of um, pieces coming off of it on all sides. Um, and I also do want to point out it includes the two pieces of open space um, that completely encompass the Summit Ridge subdivision. Uh, these are two pieces that were set aside when that area was subdivided as open space per our subdivision regulations, uh, and then code requires those to be deeded over to the city. Um, so again, we are the city is owners of those properties to be open space, and so we are in combination with the larger parcel um, asking for all of that to be removed from the plan development and made conservation. Um, so moving forward with the information, uh, again, zoning showing it's part of the plan development. However, you'll notice all the pieces around it um, that are not part of the plan development are zoned low density residential, and the recplex being the other conservationally zoned piece of property on the northeast of the subject property. Existing land use uh, this property, along with everything adjacent to it, is undeveloped except for the Summit Ridge subdivision and the recplex. 
And it also does touch a portion of the greens uh, there on the very far, if I can get the cursor to come up, on its very eastern end here. So again, the proposed zoning, you can uh, really see the change of the, and the expanse of the conservation uh, district off of the RecPlex if this were to be approved. Uh, these details are very similar to the ones we showed for the previous item, just the back history on the plan development itself. Uh, this area, because it was larger and gets away from the Branson Hills Parkway corridor, uh, it did um, kind of expand the allowable uses uh, to also include single family along with multifamily and commercial. Uh, and there's a little bit of open space as well. However, in contrast to the other parcel we just talked about, uh, this is, while also undeveloped, it's very much wooded. Um, it has not had any earthwork or any clearing done um, by any of the previous owners up to this point, nor has the city. Um, our, big, our big reason for coming to you all this evening to, to bring this out of the plan development is to, to utilize it, for the conservation zoning that's been established with our city, and very much complement and expand the offerings of the RecPlex. Uh, the RecPlex, as you all know, is a, a great, great asset to the community um, with its recreational fields, um, its walking path, its indoor uh, courts, um, its, its weights. It's, it's, it's just a great asset to have for our community, and the fact that this property is adjacent to it just opens that up exponentially. With that, staff recommends approval, and obviously we're more than happy to answer any questions. And because we are the applicant, we'll fill that role as well. <laughs> Thank you. Very well. Commissioners? Uh, yes, Commissioner Howden. Um, so, Joel, it might be um, helpful to the audience to point out that while I I'm also on Parks Board, um, and while we always need new fields, that the kind of the grade of this you know area doesn't really allow for that so i think there's a more realistic um, understanding that it's probably going to be used for trails i think that's helpful. yeah the city just recently acquired this property so it's very much still early in the planning discussion um, to to try and figure out what the best use is inevitably for this property but you're exactly right it is steep um, it is severe so uh, the opportunities of developing 20 ball fields is probably not very realistic um, but again, we're very excited to, to get into those conversations with the community and see what that will lead to, for sure. Great news. I see Director Shook is in the audience tonight. Do you want to come up and, uh, and give us any uh, visioning that you might have uh, as our Director of Parks? Uh, quite an opportunity. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, Director, I uh, am excited about this, but as Joel mentioned, it's very, very preliminary, but it is attached to, you know, the RecPlex, and we're excited about the opportunity. It probably does lend itself to trails and uh, recreational opportunities, so just a very preliminary, and want to engage the community in that conversation, but uh, first time we've had a piece of land like this in a really long time, probably since Lakeside Forest, so excited about the opportunity. Thank you. Thank and, you. And exciting. Probably we also want to note just for, for those that are interested, so this was donated to the city. The city did not purchase these lands. Um, it was donated by the previous property owner to the city. Very good. Very, very good. Any other commi commissioner questions? Yes. yes. Commissioner Nichols, please. Uh, Director Hornickel, I'd like to ask, uh, first of all, this is already, just to set up the question, it's already zoned in such a way that it can be developed for single family and multifamily residential, correct? It, it is. It, as being part of the PD. Yes, however, um, there are some tax responsibilities on the property. Mm -hmm. um, so if the city wanted to potentially sell the property in the future and have somebody develop it under those uses, um, that person would inevitably be responsible for those tax burdens. Um, the tax burden is quite expansive on this property, and, and so we believe there's really no opportunity for that. Um, when you add those responsibilities to the developmental costs, uh, there's just really um, no opportunity to develop this property. That makes a lot of sense right now. Um, we believe it's a greater asset to the community as open space that can be used by all versus developed by few. To whom are the taxes owed? Uh, it is Which the, authority? The Branson Hills CID. So their taxes owned, owed to the CID? Correct. Not to the city, but to the CID. Right. Um, let's see. And ha the city became owners because the property was donated. And do you think of that probably the cause for that was the tax overburden? The real estate company that bought the, comp 
bought the property. It was an investment company. They took a path of litigation on the property to try to get the uh, back assessments lifted. Uh, they were unsuccessful. The Southern District Court of Appeals ruled against them. So at that point, they have really no other options, either pay the taxes, find a buyer that would compensate sufficiently enough to cover the taxes that are owed, or donate it to a not-for-profit not not or a municipality. So what happens to the properties when it comes into the city by donation, it basically freezes. I, there's no other way to put it. So if the city ever decides to sell it or subdivide it, break it apart, do other things with it um, other than public purpose uses for the citizens, then those taxes would become due. So um, that's kind of the handcuff, if you will, that is put on this piece of property with the donation. Uh, just following up, I've noticed over the last few years on the commission that the city's been I think aggressive may be fair in their pursuit of residential development, uh, particularly low income housing, but single family and multi uh, family. I've personally witnessed uh, spot zoning in the center of community commercial districts for <coughs> high density residential. And I just wonder how this move of taking a very large tract of land, which is obviously surrounded by residential and commercial development, including the new development that we just uh, approved to pass up to the board. Uh, how does this justify with our uh, move toward establishing additional residential opportunities by taking this offline and disallowing that by rezoning at conservation? So again, you're exactly right that there's a significant need in the community for affordable housing. Um, affordable housing uh, by definition, needs to be affordable. And how can you do that? You, you have to do that on land that is developable um, so that your development costs are low enough that it, it can be affordable housing. Um, again, looking at, at this land that has been donated to the city, it's, it is not ideal by any stretch for, for housing. Um, it would take a significant amount of work um, to, to prepare the property for development, extend the necessary utilities for development, including roads and sewer and water. Um, and, and so as I stated earlier, we, we believe in reviewing this and bringing this request to you all to initiate this, that it, it definitely provides a greater asset to the community as open space, preserve the vegetation, preserve those steep slopes and you know, provide open space for the community. Thank you. Uh, I would amplify that uh, having this open space and left uh, wooded will be a great asset in terms of anybody who lives downstream uh, in, all the way to Lake Tinicomo uh, for this to remain uh, in, a, in a more nat native or natural state. Any other questions or comments by the commissioners? I think we've had adequate time. Uh, folks in the, in the audience, those of you who have come and maybe received a card, Tonight, would you like to ask any additional questions uh, about this rezoning? Yes, please come forward. We'd like you to uh, write your state, uh, write in your address and name, and state your name for us. And welcome to the podium. My name is Donald Oferoski, and I have a question. <clears throat> South of the ball fields, doesn't look like that's in the purple lines. So could that be developed? Just so it, you're, it yeah, could, the big yellow area there? It, it could be. The reason it's not included in tonight's request is because it's not owned by the city of Branson. Um, however, it's not part of the plan development either, so it is identified on the city's zoning map as low density residential. So that would be the only allowed use currently, as well as all those other properties surrounding the property that are identified in the yellow. Um, if somebody were to want to develop those in some other development pattern or use, they would have to request rezoning to be able to do so. Okay. And then as far as the clinic, 
that they were talking about planning. Do we have, a, is it Mercy or Cox? Can we know a name of what it's gonna be? We don't have any information that's been provided to us, so you'd have to ask the applicant if, if you all are interested in that answer. Thank you. My name is Andronikos Tsahiridis. I live down here at the bottom of that corner over there. I have a couple questions regarding um, that little line that's sticking out in the purple and between there and there. Uh, my concern is, yeah, that little one, my concern is that there's gonna be an entrance there for a path and I do not like, all the residents in that area are against that. That's one, we're afraid that we're gonna have some random people come in our neighborhood uh, the other thing is also at the corner over there at the bottom of that uh, boot hill, as you see. Also, I don't think it's possible to be, do anything over there because of the steepness of the ground, as you said. And about the low income housing, I don't think anybody in the, uh, all the residents are against that. There's no way uh, when we're paying city taxes, CID taxes and everything else, you guys are not allowed to build something like that. It does make sense for that area to build some low-income housing. So I don't know what was that question regarding about. Are you asking? Yes, me? sir. Uh, it's uh, concerning the city's push to make uh, residential more available. Low-income housing was just one example, not specifically stating that anyone has plans. Yeah, but we live in Missouri. There's plenty of space here. <laughs> Trust me. This, this is a big space. Anyway, uh, that's one. And two is uh, what plans you guys have exactly regarding the paths? Are you guys doing, gonna do like a bicycle, like uh, Mr. Howden said, or uh, is gonna be strictly like walking paths, or are you guys gonna build something over there? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna answer your first question first, if that's all right. So, yeah. so the reason for this uh, small area extension in the southern portion of the property is the Branson Hills um, master plan, if you will, for the entire development did show the Stone Valley Estate subdivision mm -hmm. um, to have a road that eventually connected out to Flynn Road. So you can very much see the alignment yeah. um, coming here. So again, we, the city, just acquired this property in August. So it is, it is so early in conversations about what uh, to do with the property. So um, we don't know if that road will be expanded. We don't know where access will be provided. We don't know what trails. We don't know what the surfaces will be. Are you gonna notify the people that live there before you guys gonna do that kind of decision? Or? So I believe I made the comment and I believe the parks director, Cindy Shook, made the comment that absolutely it will be a community discussion okay. um, to, to That's see what how the community about. wants to, to use the property. Okay, and about uh, the second part, about uh, the development, you're not sure yet because... Exactly, yeah, so I kind of answered both questions with that point that it's still very, very early in the conversation to know exactly what the needs of the community and the wants are. Okay, again, I represent some of the folks over there that couldn't come today, but uh, we all have questions that uh, we are a little bit against some things, but we agree with the conservation uh, plan that you guys have over there. We're all for it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else would like to uh, come and talk? Okay, uh, are there any other uh, questions on the part of the commission for either staff or uh, in this case, any of the speakers? Okay, hearing none, uh, are there any? Just, yes. just one question about the CID. Uh, do we know when it expires? Because I heard something about uh, this is not a zoning question, the CID. Oh, okay. we, we, we don't have information for that. So, so you who can address do I need to that. ask about you can that? Call down to, 
call down to maybe call the mayor's office. The mayor's office? Yeah, I can get you that information. Sir. Okay, so uh, who, what's your name, sir? Uh, Chris Liebeck. I'm the city attorney. Okay, so I'll, I'll talk to you. on the website. Just shoot me an email, and I can look that up for you. Yeah, we also have an issue with a stop sign in that area because it's a three-way. Now it's going to be a four-way because of the new development, and nobody's helping us. Uh, they tell us that we cannot put our own stop sign there. So again, because it's a private property, but it doesn't make sense. We're paying city taxes. We, we have your information. Hopefully, if you um, filled in your name on the sign-in sheet there in front of you yeah, I did. Um, with your phone number and email, I did. and yeah. um, we'll make sure the appropriate people reach out to you and see if we okay, can thank you. get your request. Yeah, we're dealing with zoning. Let's uh, deal with zoning. Uh, let's vote. Thank you, Chairperson. I'll now open vote. Commissioner Romine? Yes. Vice Chairperson O'Day? Yes. Commissioner Richards? Yes. Commissioner Howden? Yes. Commissioner Lloyd? Yes. Commissioner LeBlanc? Yes. Chairperson Davis? Yes. Commissioner Nichols? Yes. Alderwoman Denham? Yes. Vote is now closed. Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and at this point, uh, we are moving on in our agenda to reports. Uh, looking forward, uh, yes. Marshall Howden? Um, Commissioner Howden. Since we've gotten through all of the things I, I mentioned to you, I do have to leave at 820 tonight, per okay. a privilege. It kind of works out. I'll listen to the training and I'll get that. But I, if you guys will excuse me, I have to leave. So thank, thank you, you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your attendance. Let the record show that uh, Commissioner Howden left uh, at the meeting at uh, 818. Thank you. Uh, now we'll... Take a moment and let the audience. Uh, Mr. Chairperson, um, I'm, I'm by all means not trying to, <laughs> to dictate what we do next, but just a, a reminder, a question if you wanted to do the training and wrap that up or the reports next. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and wrap up the training. Okay. And then we can do the reports. Okay, perfect. What, what do we have left on the training? Uh, just six slides. Six slides, okay. And we're done. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, um, hold on just a second, Commissioner. I need to give him my email address so he can contact me. There you go. So we talked about this concept of being Let's pick up where we last left off. We talked about the concept of being fact finders. So what are those just basic facts you are trying to find? Um, and again, we're looking at this in the framework of our community plan 2030. So will the proposal before the board, like we just heard with regards to this um, unknown medical facility, will the proposal overload public infrastructure? Well, in that case, we know Public Water District 3 may have some challenges, um, but would it overload our public infrastructure? Would the proposal violate the property rights of the other of others? Is there something about it that is going to affect adversely or illegally the property rights of um, others? And is the proposal consistent with the adopted comprehensive plan? I probably sound like a broken record with this, but that is the most important document that drives decision making in the city. We always refer back to it every Alderman meeting, every decision, you will see staff always tie this back to one of those rocks, if you will, that are in the comprehensive plan. So where does this information come from? Staff reports that, that uh, city staff prepare. Um, the question and answers that you get from uh, the hearing um, the application that the um, applicant provides that's always included as an exhibit and supporting documents. A good example of that is the how we included as exhibit three the Branson Hills um, plan development. So you could see kind of what they were removing this item from. And then map studies and other analysis. I always laugh at Joel gives us 15 different perspectives of a piece of property so we can see it on all facets. So again, that's where you're 
facts come from to ultimately make your decision? Yeah, the, the big thing actually, uh, we just had a discussion with the Board of Aldermen at a recent study session about application fees, um, particularly for planning items. Each director was given the opportunity to kind of go through their responsibilities and what fees are attached to those requests. And, and um, you know, as, as long as I've been here, one of the things staff um, does quite extensively is, is the staff reports. A lot of research, a lot of time goes into that on behalf of the applicant. And, and our belief has always been the reason to do that is to provide as best we can a unified presentation to you all. Um, you know, with two applicants, you know, you could get a very thorough applicant with a lot of information. And then the next one could be somebody that maybe is not really great at public speaking, doesn't really have their thoughts ironed out, and may not present themselves as well, which may lead to a postponement, a delay, a request for additional information, which then makes their process last much longer. The benefit of staff kind of helping uh, applicants through the process is we spend a lot of time back and forth with applicants trying to gather as much information, try to best guess the questions you all will be interested in so that we can provide as complete a package to you and make their process as efficient as possible. The downside of all that being it's, it's a lot of time, so that equates to a higher application fee. So we believe that that application fee is an investment in, in their request in their process, um, but it is a tough battle um, because when people look at that and, and really don't have the benefit of that explanation that I just gave, um, it, it you know, always seems a little higher than maybe what they're, they're hoping for. So other considerations, the things you should be looking at when you are doing this is things like traffic, noise, odor. I think we heard from um, the gentleman that uh, lived in that, by that little sliver of property just now. I mean, he was concerned clearly about traffic coming in and out of that sliver. Vibration, electrical interference, a lot of these things maybe not so much applicable here in the city of Branson. We see these primarily more in larger subdivisions property value. The one thing, though, that doesn't matter at this level is aesthetics, okay? And not to pick on the basket company, but there's an example of some uh, lovely aesthetics, okay? That should not factor into the decision if all the other pieces fit. Non-findings of fact, fears. What's, what, what do we fear is going to happen? What are our desires? Number of people in opposition, in favor, or present at the meeting. Um, promises made. Again, you heard uh, Mr. Coltrane stand up there, talk about things that were outside of the zoning question. Again, he is not bound to that. All that, was before, all that is before the board at that point is zoning. As Joel illustrated, that stuff comes upon this commission later on in the process. So again, we can't make our decision dependent on simple promises personal characteristics of the participants, this goes without saying, and unsubstantiated claims about potential impacts, the what ifs, okay? So again, this is not our presentation, this is Simcox's presentation, I just wanna make that clear to everybody. Um, so zoning. Let me, let me make a, yes, a sir. kind of a comment. Uh, as chairman, uh, and I've served on some sort of board for off and on for a long time, uh, probably not as long as Commissioner Lloyd, but uh, close, uh, is that as commissioners, if you have it yet, you will uh, be party to uh, a phone call or a conversation uh, by someone uh, who's wanting to uh, educate you or ultimately uh, change your mind or get your support uh, and hopefully collect a promise from you. And if that happens to you, it probably will. As chairman, I expect you to m make the committee aware of that. Say, look, I had a phone call from so-and-so person, and they wanted to talk to me about this issue, and here's what we talked about. Just, you know, make it clear to us. It's going to happen. And uh, it should be, as a uh, uh, highly functioning commissioner, you have no problem sharing that. So whether it's... Uh, you know, a concerned neighbor, owner of the property, uh, some person in politics, whatever that might be. Uh, it's it's uh, appropriate that, you know, you just make a statement. Uh, if it's a conflict of interest, that's a little different. Uh, and 
Commissioner Lloyd uh, abstained from a vote tonight because uh, of whatever reason uh, that he had. But conflict of interest, we have good information on that to read up and make sure we don't vote when we are in conflict. But this is a different matter. This is a matter of influence, influencing your opinion. And you should get your opinions from first the staff report, what you read, and then second from what proceeds here tonight or the meetings. Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about zoning now. So again, what we have here is this is the official zoning map of the city of Branson. <coughs> Okay, so what is zoning? It's how we vary intensities, densities, and types of, we'll say structures, for lack of better words, or uses. Um, so we have residential, commercial, industrial business, and we saw an example of a planned development. Those are 10,000 foot view. You can see some other examples there on that map. Layered inside zoning is the concept of a special use versus a temporary use. And Joel's stretching up, which means he wants to say something. <laughs> well, I, I also wanted to point out this is actually our past zoning map. It's not our current zoning map. I'm we getting there. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting there. I just want to be sure of that. So, so this is an example of a past zoning map. You notice <clears throat> wide swaths of red, wide swaths of blue, planned development, commercial. Um, but before we get to what it looks like today, special use versus temporary use permits. So a special use uh, permit would be where we authorize a land use that is allowed and encouraged by the ordinance and declared harmon harmonious with the applicable zoning district that's contained in our city code. So we want to use, there may be some special conditions tied to the use, but it's consistent with that type of zoning district. That's a little different than a temporary use. Um, the temporary use is basically to allow the use of a piece of property of a temporary nature, and we wanted to allow it for a specific period of time in a manner that will not adversely impact the general welfare of persons residing in the community. So again, there's a little bit of difference between the two. Go ahead, Joel. Yeah, the other big difference being that special use permits come to you all, and that's one of your main responsibilities. It's, it's an item that you all take action on that no other body in the city does. Um, once you make a, a ruling on it, um, that is the ruling. Uh, however, with temporary uses, that, that is handled at the staff level, administratively, if you will. Um, we have what are referred to in the code book as over-the-counter temporary uses, which um, with our CitizenServe online portal, uh, essentially an applicant can put in their information. If the information matches the required fields, they're instantly issued that temporary use permit. However, then there's a secondary level um, that does require some review by staff, but again, it's very basic information as, as uh, Chris pointed out. We're really just making sure that the temporary use will be in good order with that district and it will not exceed the allowed time for that use. So this is what zoning looks like today in the city. Uh, we, we referenced uh, earlier how kind of there was this modernization of the sign code. The same thing occurred with regards to zoning in the city. So this is, you can see how the zoning has kind of become, and I'm going to use a term that may not be proper, but more granular in the city and more fitting um, and consistent with the Community Plan 2030. Yeah, and the big goal coming from the Community Plan 2030 to our, our current zoning map was to um, diversify the commercial district. Instead of one commercial district across the entire community, which is the one identified in red here, um, is the different layers of commercial. So our neighborhood commercial being the least intense commercial district and our entertainment di district being the most intense. With the alignment of the entertainment district along the 76 corridor, that is the community's way of getting development and redevelopment to concentrate along that corridor and keep it sustainable and thriving. You'll also notice the, the, we utilize the mixed use zoning district at what were identified in the community plan 2030 as activity centers. So these were major intersections uh, that were outside of the entertainment district um, to try and hopefully encourage development of mix between commercial and residential. Um, again, to help kind of slowly transition away from 76 corridor into our core neighborhoods um, or those areas that are identified in yellow being our, our low density dwelling district districts. 
Keep talking, Joel. Yeah, I'll keep going on subdivisions since I talked about it earlier. Um, so subdivisions are divided in two categories, um, not only in the city of Branson, but all other jurisdictions. We have our minor subdivisions, which are handled at an administrative level, just like temporary use permits. And the big thing with that is uh, you, this is an opportunity where property owners can take two pieces of land and combine them into one. They can take one piece of land and divide it into two or three, but no more than three. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, the process is simply to come through staff. It's, it's a very um, rigid process. There's not a lot of flexibility and opportunity, which is why it's handled by staff. Um, they, they simply are, are asking for minor, minor modifications to their lot layout uh, and things like that. So that's spelled out in code. Whereas the minor subdivision, um, this, are, this is when more than three lots are basically created from one. Um, so this is where you're going to see subdivisions um, being laid out. Summit Ridge is actually the only subdivision that has gone through this process in um, uh, about 15 years. Uh, so we haven't had a whole lot of major subdivisions come through the community um, because we just don't see a whole lot of housing developments and we had such a high inventory left over from the recession. Um, we're starting to see those areas being developed like the Branson Hills area and eventually we will get to a point where there will be a need for more subdivisions but um, we're still a ways off probably from, from seeing that. The main in, uh, required improvements with that is is we do have standards for how wide the streets have to be, as I mentioned earlier, the size of sidewalk, what size street, that all the infrastructure needs to be below ground, meaning electrical and cable and telephone and things like that. Uh, and they do go through a, a, a two-step process, the preliminary plat, which comes to you all and then the board, and then the final plat, which also comes to you all and the board. The goal with the preliminary plat is to really scrutinize the layout um, and really look at the design of it. And once it gets approval to move forward, uh, they're required by code to either put in that infrastructure or and have it approved and accepted by the city, or they can place a security or a bond and then move forward with the final plat. The final plat is simply to ensure that the infrastructure was put in or it was uh, bonded against um, and that they haven't made any significant changes to the lot layouts or road alignments or things like that. So uh, it's really just a formality of making sure it was implemented the way everybody agreed to during the preliminary process. Final thing we'll just mention is transportation. This is always something that factors in. You see this more in larger cities or higher density uh, areas. Um, but just realize that traffic impacts are something that um, you can look at, you can view. Um, I liked this slide that Simcar provided because it gives us the, I'll call it the buzzwords of street classifications because occasionally um, you'll hear Joel or Jake um, drop into planning and zoning buzzwords. So what is a primary arterial, secondary arterial, collector street? Because again, that describes different types of traffic flow different densities of traffic flow. And we do have supplementary use standards that refer to these. Um, certain uses do have to exit out to a primary arterial or they have to um, go out to at least a collector or they can't go out to a local street. So we do reference these from time to time in the code book. And that's basically all we have. Again, I encourage you all, um, you know, these agendas, they get published ahead of time. Um, as a lot of you know, if there are questions, that's what staff is here for. Reach out to us, ask us those questions. We can get you that information to you timely. Um, because again, sometimes it may just be a simple misunderstanding or um, clarification of something that is stated in a application or a um, staff report. And that, again, that's, that's why we have subject matter experts. They're here to help aid you in your findings and recommendations. Yeah, it goes back to our comments about our applicant and working on their behalf as well. If we know maybe some concerns or questions you have ahead of time, that gives us a few extra days to um, do some research and get that information again so we can give you a complete package of information during our meetings. Thank you. Uh, questions? You know, I've got one. Uh, yes, Commissioner. Asked. Yeah, and that's an interesting topic as well because the city in the past had very significant codes for communications towers. However, there was issues at the state level that basically took our powers away to regulate those. Um, so it really dumbed it down to we could only um, um, regulate their location. And we do have height requirements for structures in the city, so we could have that. 
um, a lot of communication towers have not only gotten special use permits, but then gone onto the Board of Adjustment for height variances as well. Um, but yeah, it very much takes away our ability to, to talk about aesthetics. Some, some communities have overlay districts, um, and they start to get in that conversation a little bit more than we do. Um, but the city of Branson <clears throat> has, in the past up to this point, not wanted to go down that road, just because we are so unique. And you see all the amazing and different uh, aesthetics along the 76 corridor, and we'd, we'd hate to really put a, put a cap on the opportunities there. Well, I uh, want to thank uh, Joel and Chris for the, their work and uh, for bringing us uh, good information and good training. Uh, I'd like to suggest that uh, at a future date we continue training and uh, the, one of the last slides that you showed tonight were regarding platting, uh, the preliminary plat and the final plat. And uh, that's something that we haven't seen very much of of late, but on the plats, uh, is where this body actually gets to see some of the concerns dealt with throughout the development process come to fruition. And so we hear concerns on the front end, stormwater issues uh, like that, that uh, we're really not supposed to be talking about uh, during, uh, during that zoning discussion. Uh, <coughs> It's a valid concern, and it needs to be dealt with, and it will be dealt with during the process. And we get to see that in on the plat. Uh, we get to see setbacks. We we can see uh, uh, you know easements. We can see uh, you know, sometimes we can see buffering. Uh, we can certainly see stormwater uh, management, and we can certainly see uh, utilities and and street widths. And from from that, we can get a sense of scale. So I think it would be wise for all of the commissioners uh, who aren't highly educated in platting, including me. I haven't seen one in a long enough period of time. I'd have to go back and study up on it some. But I think that would be a good, uh, a good training for us uh, to see, a, a, particularly the final plats, but maybe, you know, something, you, you understand what I'm trying to, to get at? You can show us how we can see a concern that was, that was brought forward in a prior meeting show up as a result of the process on the final plat. Absolutely. I mean, the easiest way to describe it in the kind of the most simplistic terms is development is almost a two-step process. You've established zoning. What do I think I want to use the property for? And then you come back before the board and say, this is what I'm going to use the property for. So it's that second step when that decision, this is what I'm going to use the property for. When these types of factors come into play, this type of inquiry and fact-finding occurs. So again, the zoning piece is just the, how does this fit in the overall puzzle, the overall com comprehensive plan for the city? And it's until we get to that point where we want to park an aquarium or want to park a um, whatever, that's when you start having those conversations as to how is this going to look? What's this going to look like? And how is it going to affect uh, the city's infrastructure? Maybe 30 minutes on that subject sometime. No problem. Yeah, and obviously if we did ever have a request come before you all, that it would be a significant review and significant presentation to you all about all of those things. Is there enough capacity for X amount of homes? Is there enough um, capacity on the street that this subdivision will be pouring vehicles out onto and from every day? Um, all those things would go into our review and our presentation to you all. Good. Very good. Uh, if there are any other comments on the education, we are now ready to address our reports. And I'm going to ask uh, our Board of Aldermen Representative, uh, Ruth <coughs> Denham, if you could uh, shed some light on uh, the report or the process I'm sure that you're possibly still going through uh, in uh, the Country Bluff issues, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At the last planning and zoning meeting, I was um, requested to provide information regarding the Country Bluff Estates um, concerns that were presented to us, the documents. I did email the documents on with um, comments stating that a report was to be brought back to PNZ. I have not received a report to be brought back to Planning and Zoning Commission. But the information was passed on. Okay. So 
this point, you have made the request and ha it has not, uh, you haven't received any information to report back to us is what I'm hearing. You, you made the request and, and, uh, of, uh, of, the, of the board and the administrator. Yes, I received my marching orders, yeah. like you yeah. commented at the last meeting. Yeah. And I did pass on the information. Um, any emails that take place between, um, that are confidential, I, yeah, I don't will know. not. But Ms. Webster did make her presentation, so I know nothing more than the information that she presented this evening, so I have not received a report okay. as requested. Okay. We thank you for that report, and uh, we'll, uh, you can report every month if there's something that comes up, of course, in the Port of Alderman meeting with deals with the uh, planning and zoning. We'd welcome your report. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, other commissioners have any reports or requests of information? Okay. I have a yes. Okay. Go ahead, Commissioner okay. Lloyd. Okay. In the last P and Z meeting we had, we did not take action on a request, and that was going to go to the Board of Aldermen, I think. Yes, sir. What was the response there? Uh, they they approved the first reading. So it's set for, let, let, Let's let, let me hear that again. Which one are you talking about? I'm yes. sorry. So so this was the request by Mr. Pierman to rezone his property from mixed use to high density residential. Yes, um, and that was the one that uh, we couldn't deal with because it died for a lack of a second. Correct, so uh, we... And, and that was part of the reasoning tonight why I wanted to change our order of business because, uh, you know, an applicant that's paid their money and has gone through the process and, and uh, sh should have an opportunity to be heard. Now that brings up an interesting question. If an applicant is not present, what should we do, okay? And I think we have to rely on the information that we're given at the meeting uh, to decide that. But that does, you know, bring up a question. And we, we definitely represented to the board during our presentation to them during the first reading uh, that since no action was taken, we basically presented that as there was no recommendation from the Planning Commission. Um, but staff did recommend approval and the board voted in favor of the request. And so the final reading will be on their next agenda. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yes, that did. It was a little bit confusing to me um, because it was neither approved or denied. So I did bring that up at the Board of Aldermen meeting, and I asked if that procedure is listed in the Branson Municipal Code, to which staff stated no. It's listed in Robert's Rules of Orders, but what I didn't ask is if you could please provide a copy in Robert's, from Robert's Rules of Orders stating that, you know, that the Planning and Zoning Commission could forward it on without, because it's almost, I was confused because it's almost as if, um, as if no vote was taken at all because it died for a lack of a second. So if we could get that, that would be great. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, and you might wanna add also in future education, uh, you know, a uh, this would probably be in Chris's uh, area, uh, you know, the, uh, a, greater discussion specifically about where the authority of the Board of Aldermen versus the uh, Commission, uh, Planning and Zoning Commission lie. Basically, the Board of Aldermen, you know, that's where it happens, you know. And so uh, maybe using some examples might be an opportunity, uh, Chris, to, to, you know, spend five or ten minutes on some of the instances that you ex experience personally or that might happen as a uh, uh, older woman denim is, is saying that are you know not uh, rare but uh, unique exceptions maybe be glad to and not to not to belabor this point but also your suggestion to move the motion and the second uh, to the beginning I think reiterates that because we did after some research about that question brought up during the board meeting um, do do a little bit more looking into it and there are examples out there where when there's an active dialogue between the commission and the public and staff that they are engaged in the process so you really don't even need a motion and second at that point because everybody is engaged in the process so in the reality is we could have gone right to a vote um, somebody could have called for the vote um, because it was being discussed so there is that backing out there as well but because no, no that, that would be an interesting discussion to have right so we we felt confident 
given all that, to stand before the Board of Aldermen with no recommendation from this body um, to present it and keep the applicant's process moving forward. Yeah, you know, uh, we're, we're, we need to have good customer service, you guys. <laughs> we're going to get a bad reputation quick if we can't do business for these applicants that come before us. I'd like some clarification on that. Uh, are you, did you just explain to us that if no motion or second is made, but we engage in discussion, then someone, for a member of the commission can call for the question, even though there's been no motion or second? So is, again, is without, saying? without, you know, giving, going into great depths, I'm just saying the research we did to be able to move that particular applicant's request forward, we felt confident and comfortable doing so based on that research. Now, if you all want us to look into that more and provide a more definitive answer and response about future items and requests, we're glad to do so. I think some clarification on that would be good in case, again, the situation arises and a member of the commission does I, call for the question. I, def I definitely think that having the motion and second at the beginning yeah. before we get into dialogue cleans that up immensely. Agreed. Just, my yeah, my perception of Robert's rules clearly to me, does state that before there can be discussion, there needs to be a motion on the floor, Which on the table. Again, I, I don't know the exact amount of time that was spent on that last item, but it was, it was significant enough, and people came to the podium and spoke, so everybody in the room was definitely engaged in that conversation. Okay, thank you. And as, as chairman, I think the more concrete, sequential we keep it, the better. Agreed. Random motions from the commissions are not going to be accepted very readily by this chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else for the good of the cause? In that case, I, I'd, yes. I, sorry. Yes, go ahead, Joel. I'm, I'm really not trying to keep you all here any later. Um, it doesn't appear that we have any items for November, so appreciate your all flexibility to move the meeting, but um, we will not have a November Planning Commission wow. meeting. Happy Thanksgiving. Early. That's right. Happy Christmas. More time right. for the Christmas party. There you go. So we will be we will be back items pending to, to a regular schedule in December in with December, the first the Tuesday. Tuesday. We'll we'll let you know if we have any items for that. Commissioner meeting. Howden will be happy about that. I I'm sure he will. So th again, thank you for everybody's flexibility. All right. In that case, then we'll uh, uh, call for a vote, uh, a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Second. Got uh, O'Day and Romine. Uh, roll call vote to adjourn, please. Thank you. Alvin Vogt. Commissioner Romine? Yes. Vice Chairperson O'Day? Yes. Commissioner Richards? Yes. Commissioner Lloyd? Yes. Commissioner LeBlanc? Yes. Chairperson Davis? Yes. Commissioner Nichols? Yes. Alderman Denham? Yes. Thank you. Thank Motion you. See adjourned. you in December.